Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Ciao ragazzi! Hi guys! I'm Desiree. Welcome to 10 ways to remember words. Associo parole nuove con parole che suonano simili nella mia lingua madre. I associate new words with words that sound similar in my native language. Ok, for example, yeah, we have with English and Italian a lot of words that are similar. For example, lingua, language, linguaggio. Cerco di usare la lingua abitualmente nel contesto della vita quotidiana. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. Let's say you're washing the dishes and you think, oh, how do I say washing the dish in Italian? And then you start thinking about how to say that. Lavare i piatti. Just think about the things that you are doing and how you would explain them in the new language. Dico parole ad alta voce in modo che io possa davvero sentirle. I say words out loud so that I can actually hear them. This is a great thing to do. Like, my problem with English, especially in the beginning, I didn't really talk English, I didn't speak that with anyone, and that was a problem because I still now... Maybe if I hear a word, I know what it means, but then when I I have to say that, I'm not sure about how to pronounce that. So yeah, practice to say words out loud. Guardo spesso i video in TV o su YouTube che sono stati progettati per i bambini. I often watch TV or YouTube videos that are designed for young children. Yeah, this is a great way because, for example, cartoons, so things that are for children, They make you understand what they're doing without saying that. Also, you should try watching something that you watched already so you can understand how to say the same thing that you already know in the new language that you're studying. I would do that. Imparo l'origine delle parole e come le diverse parole sono legate le une alle altre. I learn about the roots of words and how words are related to each other. For example, parole in Italian words and parlare, speak, it's the same root, same origin, the same radice, we would say, par, parola, par, parlare. Io uso le ripetizioni, leggere, scrivere e pronunciare le parole più e più volte. I use repetition, reading, writing and speaking words over and over again. Be careful with repetitions because, for example, to me, uh, after I repeat a word a lot of time, I'm like, does this word really exist? <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure anymore about the word itself. So yeah, do that, but maybe with a lot of words, not just one per time. Keep them written somewhere. So even later you can check if you know the words and actually see your improvements. Parlo il più spesso possibile con i madrelingua. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. Maybe also if they don't correct you because they're not teachers or because they just want to talk, it's still useful to see if they at least understand what you're trying to say. So don't worry about mistaking because it's okay and be careful not to switch to another language just because it's easier. Keep focused on using the new language. Provo a pensare in italiano così che diventi naturale. I try to think in Italian so it becomes natural to my thought process. I would advise you to do that at the end of the day, like trying to think in the new language about what you did today. In order to go to school I was waiting for the bus. Per andare a scuola stavo il bus. Mm, What's waiting again? And you don't remember? You can check it, write it down, you will remember faster. Aspettare, by the way, if you want to know. Stavo aspettando il pullman. Ascolto canzoni e memorizzo i testi. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. This is a good thing to do because sometimes when you're listening to songs maybe you don't really understand what they're saying so it's good to search for lyrics. Try to sing along with them the next time you hear the song so you see if you really know, if you really learned the word. Because sometimes in songs singers use words or expressions that we don't use in daily life. Be careful about that, but still it's a great exercise. Cerco di usare la parola nuova in una frase semplice, così imparo frasi intere e non solo singole parole. I try to use the new word in a simple sentence, so I learn whole phrases and not just individual words. When you learn a word, let's say for example telephone, 
you can think about a phrase um, I use the telephone to call my friends uso il telefono per chiamare i miei amici and if you think about something in particular like I use the telephone to call my cousin uso il telefono per chiamare i miei, mio you can search for that word too so you will learn another new word uh, if you're wondering cousin is cugino 15 happy words amare, love Amare is a verb that you can use with a lot of stuff. For example, your boyfriend or girlfriend, you love them in a romantic way. Your family, you love them. Or your friends, dogs or cats or even food. You can just say, I love spaghetti, for example, and that's fine. Bello, beautiful. Bel bambino. Bella ragazza, what a beautiful girl. Bella giornata, what a beautiful day. And yeah, when you say just bello, it's something that you approve, you like. Like, how was your trip? Bello, it was cool, beautiful. Contento, happy. Noi siamo contenti. We are happy. Essere contento, to be happy. You can ask to a kid, for example, sei contento dei tuoi regali? Are you happy about your presents? Grande. Great. Remember that grande literally means big, but in this case it's an exclamation like great, grande. Hey, I'm getting married. Great, grande. Orgoglioso, proud. I'm very proud of my children. Sono molto orgoglioso dei miei bambini. I don't have kids, but I hope I can say this someday in my life. Piacere, like. Ok, piacere as a verb means like, for example, a me piace il blu, I like blue. But when you're introducing yourself, you can say, il mio nome è Desiree, piacere. My name is Desiree, nice to meet you. Because it would be piacere di conoscerti, it's nice to meet you. Vivace, lively. That kid is really lively, quel bambino è molto vivace. So yeah, means he's cheerful and wants to play a lot maybe and never asleep probably <laughs> yeah also you can say about a city it's a lively city è una città vivace also a color can be vivace è un colore molto vivace it's a lively color rilassato relaxed ah sono così rilassato ah i'm so relaxed like i really need to take a break and go on vacation to relax Ho proprio bisogno di prendere una pausa, andare in vacanza e rilassarmi. You can also use that as an adjective to people, like he's a relaxed person, è una persona rilassata. Buffo, funny. Buffo, it's not the same as divertente, that is another way to say funny. For example, that movie was really fun, quel film era molto divertente. Yeah, I would say that divertente can be used for everything, while buffo it's something more particular. Buffo, it's a kind of sweet way to be funny. Like, you can say that uh, Kitty is buffo. It makes you laugh, but not like humor, but more like, oh. <laughs> Energico, energetic. So someone with a lot of energy. Like, uh, for example, if we just finished playing volleyball, and you're like, ah, oh, I'm so tired, sono così stanco. But that person goes like, hey, why don't we play football now? Hey, perché non giochiamo a calcio ora? Questa è una persona energica. It's an energetic person. Entusiasta, excited. She was so excited about the movie. Lei era così entusiasta del film. He's really excited about his birthday. È entusiasta del suo compleanno. Can be used with... Boys and girls without changing, it's always entusiasta. Sono entusiasta della vita. I'm excited about life. Fiducioso, hopeful. I trust people. I am a person that can be called fiduciosa. So, yeah, this adjective changes. Fiducioso and fiduciosa. Sono fiducioso riguardo al futuro. I'm hopeful about future. Gentile, kind. È una persona gentile. It's a kind person. È sempre gentile con i bambini. It's always kind to kids. Oh, you can also refer about some tastes. Uh, you're eating a cake and you say, oh, that has a kind taste. It's not too strong, 
not too sweet maybe, not bitter, it's a kind taste. Ridere, laugh. That's the secret of life. Ridere, laugh a lot. È una persona che ride sempre. It's a person who always laughs or who loves to laugh, che ama ridere. Soddisfatto, satisfied. Sono soddisfatto dei miei risultati. I'm satisfied with my results. Sono soddisfatto della mia vita. I'm satisfied about my life. And that's, I think, the goal for everyone. So that's why this is the last of our 15 happy words. 10 Italian foods. Bagna cauda. Bagna cauda is a typical food of Piemonte. It's a dialect expression. So in Italian it would mean cauda from caldo, hot, and bagna is sauce, so hot sauce. Basically it's made with garlic, oil, and anchovies. Since it's hot, it's typical of autumn, but I would say winter, but it's a strong taste and people say that you can know if someone ate that the day before. So yeah, don't eat bagna cauda before a date. Crostata. It's basically a tart, like this big. So it's sweet and you can find that with marmalade. Recently also chocolate cream. The stripes that you put on top, they are like these, so crossed. That's why I would say it's easy to remember crostata, because it's made of crosses, basically. Lasagne. This is probably what everyone knows after pizza and spaghetti. Lasagne is made of this flat pasta. It's flat and long and large that you put at the bottom and then you put cheese and ragu that it's meat sauce, and then again, pasta, ragu, cheese, pasta, ragu, cheese, pasta, ragu, cheese. You can go on forever if you manage to. My grandma goes on with floors like 14. I counted that once. While my mom stays with seven at the maximum. Also, if you don't like meat or you don't want to eat that, you can just put pasta and spinach and cheese. There's a lot of things that you can do with the shape of lasagna, but it's not real lasagna. Still, lasagna is the best. Minestrone. Okay, this is basically a soup with vegetables and it can be with pieces of vegetables. So you cut it and you put it inside water, make it boil, blah, blah, blah. Or you do that and then at the end you chop it to make it more like a cream. As long as it's a soup and you like it, you can call it minestrone. Minestrone literally means a big minestra. Because when you put one at the end of a word, it becomes bigger. And minestra is a soup. So it's a big, big, big soup. Like tavolo, table, tavolone, a big table. Orecchiette con le cime di rapa. This is a dish that is typical from South Italy. It's made with turnip, especially with the part on top of that, the green one. We have endless types of pasta, like hundreds. For example, this one, orecchiette. It's small, like this, and it's not flat, okay? So the sauce can go inside. It literally means small ears. Ear is orecchio, and ette makes things smaller. Like one made things bigger, ette makes things smaller. So small ears with turnip. Panna cotta. Panna is the cream that we use. It can be Sweet or salty, it depends on which one you are using, but we use the same word, that it's panna. Cotta means baked, in fact, it's cooked, and you can eat that as it is, or add chocolate cream, chocolate sauce, or caramel. So yeah, it's a kind of pudding, but not flavored. It's just panna, so cream, white cream. Parmigiana. Okay, do you remember what I told you about lasagne? that you do a lot of floors, basically. It's the same, but it's not made of pasta, but eggplant. And then you put, again, tomato sauce and cheese. And this time, cheese is different because with lasagna, it's besciamella, while with parmigiana, you can use a lot of them. I would say maybe pecorino. Here, too, there are a lot of types of parmigiana, but yeah, remember that parmigiana has eggplant. And a lot of times, parmigiano, a name of cheese. Polenta. The first thing that you think when you think about polenta 
it's winter because it's hot and it's salty. It's kind of, so it's flour made of cereals. There are a lot of types of polenta, not the polenta itself, but how you eat that. For example, polenta valdostana, so you eat polenta with cheese or carbonara. Maybe the most famous one is called polenta concha, made with basically fat things. Tiramisu. Tiramisu, it's a dessert. What you really need to do tiramisu is mascarpone. That it's a particular cheese, sweet cheese, fat cheese, I would say. The classical one is biscuits with coffee, mascarpone, and chocolate. And that's delicious. And yeah, also sometimes people would add alcohol to have a stronger taste. Salame dolce, it's a salame, but it's sweet. So it's made of chocolate. And the white things, so the fat that you would see inside salami, is made by biscuits. But you can do that with children. It's kind of fun because you smash biscuits and then put it with chocolate that was with sugar and butter, and then you shape it as a salame, and then you put it in the fridge, freezer maybe, and then you wait, and then you eat that, and it's good. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, the top 10 compliments you will always want to hear in my language. So let's start. Sei bello. You're handsome. Sei bello. You're handsome. You can actually use the female version as well. Uh, if you want to say to a girl or a woman that she's beautiful, you can say, Sei bella. You're beautiful. Sei un amico favoloso. You are an awesome friend. Sei un amico favoloso. You are an awesome friend. Means that you are a beautiful friend. So, sei un amico favoloso if you want to compliment a friend of yours in Italian. Il tuo curriculum è impressionante. Your resume is impressive. Il tuo curriculum è impressionante. Your resume is impressive. This is actually very good when you want to talk with someone about his job and you're actually looking at, at the CV, you know, and you want to compliment the guy or the girl or the woman, uh, whoever it is, you know, for the, the, his um, job skills. Then you say, il tuo curriculum è impressionante. Also, you can say, il tuo curriculum va molto bene. Ottimo lavoro. Great job. Ottimo lavoro. Great job. Means uh, you actually say ottimo lavoro to someone when uh, um, the, 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 the work, uh, the, the job that uh, he has been asking uh, to do is just perform at the best, you know. So you can also say lavoro eccellente as ottimo lavoro. They are the same thing. So you can say Ottimo lavoro or lavoro eccellente, which means like they, they are actually the same thing. Quella giacca sembra carina addosso a te. That jacket looks nice on you. Quella giacca sembra carina addosso a te. That jacket looks nice on you. So this is something that you want to say when someone just is dressed in a way that you like, you know. So you, you can also say I like the way you, you I, 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 I like the way you are dressed up, you know, like, and you can say, uh, mi piace come ti vesti, mi piace come ti vesti, which is pretty similar to it. Hai buon gusto, you have a good taste. Hai buon gusto, you have a good taste. So, hai buon gusto is actually, you know, um, usually telling people, have, have good taste, uh, you know, especially for the fashion, you know, and all this kind of thing. So uh, you can always say to an Italian person, hai buon gusto, they will always appreciate it. Il tuo sorriso è bellissimo. Your smile is beautiful. Il tuo sorriso è bellissimo. Your smile is beautiful. It's not pretty much nothing to say about this phrase, it's just something um, really uh, nice to say, your smile is beautiful. Il tuo sorriso è bellissimo. Very good compliment. Sembri stupendo. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Sembri stupendo. You look gorgeous. Okay, you might not say this to a guy, I mean, or a girl, or you know, you might be feel a bit shy, and things like that. But you might think about this, you know, in that case, you say, Sembri stupendo. You know, you're, you're like, you're, you're amazing, you look amazing, you know. You look gorgeous in this, in this case, um, as a compliment, you know. Ti trovo in splendida forma. You look in good shape. 
Ti trovo in splendida forma. You look in good shape. Another very nice compliment to do, to, to, to say to someone. That means that, you know, your body, your shape is, you know, is okay. So, you know, and people notice it. So if you want to say it to someone like, uh, that you haven't seen for a long time, an Italian friend of yours, you know, you can say, ti trovo in splendida forma. And you will appreciate it, for sure. Senza di te non sarebbe lo stesso. Without you, it wouldn't be the same. Senza di te non sarebbe lo stesso. Without you, it wouldn't be the same. So this is something quite powerful to say to someone. It's more than a compliment, really. You know, it's, it's when you you actually cannot say without uh, the person or things like that. So it's something really, really important and um, something that you might bear in mind because it's really important. Senza di te non sarebbe lo stesso. So it's something really, really, really nice to say to someone. Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, what's the difference between sono and sto? If you study Italian, you may often come across sentences such as sto bene, grazie, meaning I'm fine, thanks, or sono italiana, which means I'm Italian. Sono is a conjugated form of the verb essere. Sto is a conjugated form of the verb stare. Now, both Italian verbs essere and stare can be translated as to be in English, but they are used differently. Essere is a direct equivalent of to be. Generally, it expresses a condition. You can use it for lots of different things like identity, as in sono Paola, I'm Paola, profession, as in sono un insegnante, I'm a teacher, nationality, as in sono italiana, I'm Italian, physical aspects, as in sono alta, I'm tall, emotions, as in sono felice, I'm happy. On the other hand, the meaning of the verb stare depends on the context we use it in. Let's see some of the most common ones. To be, as in sto bene, I'm well. To stay, as in oggi sto a casa, I'll stay home today. To fit, as in la maglietta non mi sta, the t-shirt doesn't fit me. To stand, stare in piedi, to lie, stare sdraiato. Also, a lot of idiomatic expressions use stare instead of essere, for example, Stai zitto, be quiet, stai fermo, be still, stai attento, be careful. Stare is also used with the germ verb forms in progressive tenses. For example, sto studiando italiano means I'm studying Italian or stavano correndo meaning they were running. To sum it up, we could say that stare refers to something that happens while essere refers to something that is. Here is another tip. Keep in mind that sto is commonly used with adverbs, as in sto bene, I am doing well. Sono isn't. Sono can be used only with adjectives and in sono italiana, I am Italian. Hi everyone, do you know how to say I love you in Italian? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Ti amo. Ti amo. Ti amo. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say... Ho una cotta per te. Ho una cotta per te. Ho una cotta per te. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say... Le parole non possono descrivere il mio amore per te. Le parole non possono descrivere il mio amore per te. Le parole non possono descrivere il mio amore per te. 10 phrases for surviving back 
to school. Something that when I used to go to school used to freak me out, you know. Of, of course, I mean, everyone loves holidays, so I was very scared, you know, I was a bit panicking for my, uh, for the beginning of a new year, really. All the time, <laughs> you know, so it's quite normal, you know. So let's start our lesson. Zaino, backpack. Zaino, backpack. Vado a scuola con lo zaino in spalla. I go to school with a backpack. Compagno di classe. Classmate. Compagno di classe. Classmate. I miei compagni di classe a volte sono dispettosi. Sometimes my classmates are annoying. I used to love my classmates. Uh, my classmates used to be my friends. But of course I had also some people quite annoying. But anyway, my, my best memories are from my, from my school period are uh, because of my classmates, really. So, compiti. Homework. Compiti. Homework. L'insegnante di matematica ci dà sempre molti compiti da fare a casa. The math teacher always gives us too much homework. So... Uh, homeworks as tests at school are a bit annoying as well, uh, in a way. I mean, they're really useful, you know. You can also say in Italian, i compiti non mi piacciono, or non mi piace fare i compiti, which means um, I don't like to do my homework. Esame. Exam. Esame. Exam. Questo fine settimana ci prepariamo insieme per l'esame di latino. This weekend we'll prepare for the Latin exam together. <laughs> I actually study Latin at school myself. It's a very interesting language really. Um, it's actually the base of the Italian language. The language itself, it's, it's built uh, in a completely different way than Italian. And also, if you study Latin, it's very useful for your logical reasoning. So yeah, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting language. Pausa estiva. Summer break. Pausa estiva. Summer break. Non voglio studiare tutti i giorni durante la pausa estiva. I don't want to study every day during the summer break. <laughs> okay, this is quite common. I mean, uh, it's a bit like the homework thing. Even though you have spare time and things like that, I mean, you have to do your homework because it's part of your duties to be a student, really. Scuola. School. Scuola. School. Nella scuola dei miei sogni c'è spazio per tutti per studiare in biblioteca e in giardino. In my dream school there's enough space for everybody to study in the library and outdoor. This is pretty much my dream also. I think that staying outside, you know, if you have like the possibility, you know, at your school, in your school, if you have like a, a piece of garden or things like that, it's very nice to get out, you know, and to teach your students uh, or, you know, if you are a student in a way you can ask your teacher for one time and you can experience the beauty of a lesson outside, you know, to make lessons, I mean, not just to play. Um, I used to like this. I used to have a teacher like that when I was um, in my primary school and I really like her, really. Studiare. To study. Studiare. To study. Ho deciso di studiare l'italiano come seconda lingua. I decided to study Italian as my second language. I'm very proud if you're doing so, really. I think that Italian is a very nice language. You can also say Sto imparando l'italiano, which means I am learning Italian. È il primo giorno di lezione. It's the first day of class. È il primo giorno di lezione. It's the first day of class. Siamo nella stessa classe. We are in the same class. Siamo nella stessa classe. We are in the same class. Qual è la tua specializzazione? What's your major? Qual è la tua specializzazione? What's your major? You can also say in Italian In che cosa ti stai specializzando? Which is uh, pretty much the same thing. Hi everyone! Do you know the 1000 most useful phrases in Italian? In this lesson, you'll be able to know all of them. 
So sit back, relax, and have a cup of tea as you listen and learn. Dov'è il bagno? Scusa. Grande. Ho prenotato. Quanto costa? Che cos'è questo? Grazie. Veramente? Potrebbe farmi uno sconto? La connessione wifi è gratuita? Potrei avere il conto? Ha dei consigli? Posso donarlo? You just learned the 1000 most useful phrases in Italian. And if you're interested in learning more, try learning the core 2000 word list. With this, you'll understand 95% of the language. And best of all, this is not a joke. Check out the description below and go to italianpod101.com now. See you next time. And breakup lines. I know it's a sad topic, but we're gonna do that just in case. Just don't think that you really need that. But still, breakup lines. Oh, oh. Dobbiamo parlare. We need to talk. This is always bad. Not only for breaking up. It always can mean that something happened and we need to talk about that. But yeah, it's not something happy. Because otherwise I would say something like Ah, vorrei parlare. Vorrei parlare di... I would like to talk about... For example, vorrei parlare delle vacanze. I would like to talk about vacation. Or vorrei parlarti. I would like to talk to you. But dobbiamo parlare. We need to talk. Is extremely extreme. <laughs> like, means prepare yourself. There was something wrong. Or I discovered something. So, yeah. Be prepared when you hear dobbiamo parlare. We need to talk. Dovremmo iniziare a vedere altre persone. We should start seeing other people. And that means each of you is gonna see another person. Doesn't mean that you're gonna meet new friends. Nope. Would be nice, but doesn't mean that. Maybe it's not bad if you see someone else. I will not get angry. <laughs> yeah. And kind of an indirect way. I wouldn't like that and yeah, but probably it's just to start the discussion. So yeah, I mean, I don't judge you if you're an open, open couple, but I wouldn't think that the discussion would start with this phrase. È la cosa migliore. It's for the best. That sounds hypocritical, in my opinion, because if I'm saying that to my boyfriend that I want to break up with, it's the best thing for me, not for you, of course, because if you want to keep this relationship, if you want to stay with someone and that someone tells you it's the best thing, it's for the best, of course you would answer who's best, because not mine if I want to stay with you. È solo che non sono pronto per questo tipo di rapporto. I'm just not ready for this kind of relationship. That sounds fake, in my opinion. But yeah, you can, like, if someone tells you that, you can be hurt because, yeah, why? Do you think it's too serious or you just want to have fun? So, well, it's still better than being told that later on, like, oh, I wasn't prepared for this thing, so I cheated on you. No, of course, it's better to know that before, but still, it's not fun to break up anyway. And I'm just not ready for this kind of relationship. È solo che non ti amo più. I just don't love you anymore. That can't be helped. Maybe people would be happier if you told them before. And like, listen, there's something that is not going well. I'm not sure. But not out of the blue. I don't love you anymore. Oh, okay. It's not something that you can really answer to. It's just a fact. And yeah, this probably really means you're breaking up without explanation or stuff like no but we can still do that we can still manage somehow if people tell you i just don't love you anymore means i don't even want to try so yeah that's it basically you're done ho bisogno di concentrarmi sulla mia carriera i need to focus on my career depending on people they have different priorities and yeah you can still maybe say that you will not be an obstacle for that person's career And yeah, maybe it's not that bad. They're just telling you 
hey, I want to focus on my career. So if we still want to stay together, you have to keep in mind that you are not my first priority. If for this reason they are breaking up with you, means they don't want to think about anything else, basically. So yeah, once again, done. <laughs> Io non sono la tua altezza. I'm not good enough for you. Okay, to this phrase, people can always answer, who are you to judge? I mean, I'm fine with you. Why are you saying that you're not enough? Probably because you don't want to tell me that I am the problem and you just want to break up. So I wouldn't like that. Just explain to me or just say to me, I don't like you because this, this and this, but don't say to me, I'm not enough for you, because that would be up to me to decide. Non sei tu, sono io. It's not you, it's me. You don't want to say that, that your partner is at fault, but you don't want to stay with him anymore. It's like saying, oh, you're perfect, so you can't even improve. There's nothing to anymore. It's just not you, it's my problem. But I don't want to stay with you. Basically, that's the meaning. Penso che abbiamo bisogno di una pausa. I think we need a break. Let pausa, it's pause, break. Let's maybe not talk to each other for some days. Weeks? Yeah, the problem in these cases is that you don't really know how long is a break, so it's so ambiguous. Restiamo solo amici. Let's just be friends. And yeah, so if it's before being a couple, you can say, no, it's better if we if we're just friends. Otherwise, after being a couple with the breaking up, it's restiamo amici. But in that case, I would say there's no solo, because solo means only So I would say that before being a couple, let's just, let's just be friends. And if it's after the breaking up, it's let's be friends. This, rimaniamo amici. And that can happen if you were friends even before being a couple. Rimaniamo solo amici, let's just be friends. Before being a couple, let's be friends. Rimaniamo amici after being a couple. Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, how are verbs conjugated? English verbs are not heavily inflected. In fact, there are just three endings you can add to the infinitive of regular verbs, S, for the third person, singular present tense, for example, plays. ING for the gerund, playing, and ID for the past tense, played. Most combinations of tense, aspect, mood, and voice can be expressed using auxiliary and modal verbs. Italian, on the other hand, is a heavily inflected language. Italian verbs have lots of different endings depending on their subject, tense, and mood. The infinitive is the unconjugated form of the verb, the one you'll find in the dictionary. Italian verbs are divided into three main conjugation groups according to their infinitive endings. Verbs of the first conjugation end in are, for example, parlare, meaning to speak. Verbs of the second conjugation in ere, for example, leggere, meaning to read. Verbs of the third conjugation end in ire, for example, dormire, meaning to sleep. Each group has a different and regular conjugation pattern. Even if there are a lot of irregular verbs, most Italian verbs follow one of these three systems of conjugation. Each conjugation pattern has different endings you'll need to add to the verb stem. To get the stem of a verb, All you have to do is take away are, ere, or ire. So the stem of parlare is parl, the stem of leggere is legge, and the stem of dormire is dorm. Verb endings are affected by mood, tense, person, number, and sometimes even gender. Let's take a look. Italian verbs have four finite moods. They are the indicative to express facts, For example, io dormo, I sleep. The imperative to give orders, for example, dormi, sleep. 
the subjunctive to express doubt, hope, fear and possibility. For example, che io beva, I drink. The conditional to express an action that depends on another fact that may or may not happen. For example, io leggerei, I would read. There are also three non-finite moods, which usually have just one form. The infinitive, which is also the dictionary form. For example, parlare, to speak. The gerund for progressive tenses, for example, leggendo, reading. The participle, generally used as adjective or with the other verbs, for example, parlato, spoken. While mood shows the manner in which an action is expressed, the tense is what specifies when the action happens. The only Italian mood that has all eight tenses in the indicative, which is also the most used mood. The only present tense is the present, io parlo, I speak. Past tenses include present perfect, io ho parlato, I have spoken, imperfect, io parlavo, I spoke, past perfect, io avevo parlato, I had spoken, absolute past, io parlai, I spoke, pre-trade perfect, io ebbi parlato, I had spoken. Future tenses are the future, io parlerò, I will speak. The future perfect, io avrò parlato, I will have spoken. The other moods only have a couple of tenses, usually present and past, except for the subjunctive, which has a few more. This looks like a lot, and it actually is one of the most challenging things even for native speakers. But don't panic, if you get started with the regular verbs in the indicative present tense, you will soon familiarize yourself with the conjugation patterns. Pretty interesting, right? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. A presto! See you soon!